Hey man, how's it going? Oh hey, how's it going, man? Going really well. Been really enjoying that World of Darkness game you've been running. Oh thanks, man. It's been a lot of fun playing again. I've been kind of getting crazy buying the books because I see these auctions, man. I get a good deal on something. It's hard to pass it up. Oh yeah, you got some new books. Oh yeah, man. Let's let's take is a that, look. Is that what you brought me there? Yeah, man. To show me. This. Look at this, man. What the? It was a hundred bucks, man. I I couldn't pass it up. It's a big chunk of my collection. Holy There's crap. only two books in here that I have already. Is it heavy? Uh, it's pretty heavy. Weighs like books. Weighs like books. Feels like 19 uh, clan books. When, well, you got a knife or something? Yeah, I got a Leatherman Skeletool right here, trusty. Yes. Wasn't there a guy, I think I think the guy on uh, this um, Alone series I saw, like, uh, skinned an entire moose with one of those. Yeah, like a 900 pound moose. Yeah, well, I mean, that's a smaller moose. But still, though. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, that sounds big even for a, If that's a baby, that's a big ass baby. Yeah. Eight, <laughs> I, was, I was reading about it today, like 800 pounds to 1,300 pounds. Wow. Yeah, that dude won. Yeah, it's crazy. Spoiler! But it's sharp. Let's give her a slide and a cut here. Alright. I seem to pack it very nice. Came very speedy. I just completed this auction a couple of days ago. Oh, jeez. All right. Put the skeletal back in its sheath. And let's see what this is a note. Thank you. Enjoy the books. Smiley face. Oh, sweet. Nice little personal touch. Oh, yeah, cool. Thank you and enjoy the books. Nice. Let's get that on, on a tray. Oh, no, we're not Steve1989, but we like Steve1989. He's awesome. <laughs> I like Steve1989. He's pretty awesome. <laughs> He's a daring young man. He sure is. I'd imagine the gut flora that that guy has built up over the years. <laughs> he could probably eat a fucking rubber tire. I like how he's like, uh, can you uh, survive in the apocalypse? I know I can. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hear him say that, but that's a good one. <laughs> it's a good one. Oh, very well. Oh, that's is. excellent. So he packed them within a uh, little little thing within the big box and wrapped them all up. Yeah, let's get that Oh, and I guess I should uh, clarify that these are not all clan books. There are two books in here that aren't clan books. And this happens to be one of them. Looks like the top two are. This is the Giovanni Chronicles, The Last Supper, Part 1. Oh, wow. It, uh... Ooh. is uh, a module. It's a four-part chronicle. Uh, this lot came with the first two parts. Blood and Fire is the second part. Another good one. I need three is the sun is set. And then four is... It's like some Latin phrase. Uh, so... Uh, I have to, I'll have to look up the name of that last one. It's like It begins with an M. Cool, man. And it looks like we got the first edition Asimite clan book. Oh, I know somebody named Josh. Yeah. Anna uh, will want to use this for Anna. Josh will want to use this for Anna. Anna. Our Asimite anti tribute. Yeah. And motherfucker. Look at all this ways of death. I used to have a knife exactly like that. Kill your ass. I had that exact same knife. <laughs> Seriously. That's awesome. <laughs> it wasn't a very good knife. <laughs> You used it to cut a watermelon one day. It was very ornate, but not really a great knife. Yeah, just a really cool book, man. Just the there you go. the Kiera Skura itself is just worth the worth the watch, you know. Yeah, dude, totally. Look like, like how cool that is. Where's white I, looks just like you know. I, I do love that their art is Kiera Skura. It is really unique. Art. Yeah, and it's and it's and I like how it's consistent. Yeah, I, I did get a V twenty book, which is the twentieth anniversary of Vampire the Masquerade. They came out with books. And the weirdest thing about them was the inside was color. The weirdest part is like looking at them in color, sure. Like, there's always the covers have always been color usually, but the inside being in color was really strange and it just kind of threw the whole thing off for me. Mm. But 
I mean, it's still a really good book. It's just the artwork was just, it felt, it didn't feel like Vampire the Masquerade. Right. And then we got the first edition Tremere Clan book. Another cool one. Really crazy artwork. It's hard not to like it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chainface. Mr. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty unique. Uh, now, the Tremere, are they the ones that practice, what is it called, Zemisi? Uh, thaumaturgy. Oh, thaumaturgy. At least that's how I pronounce it. Everybody, I also notice in the vampire community, everybody pronounces the words differently. It's like, you know, man, we need some, like, uniformity. But I, I call it thaumaturgy, so that's what I'm going with. Other people, you know, call it whatever they want. Right, right. Yeah, like, uh, is that the manipulation of the skin? Now? It's blood magic. Oh, blood magic. They're the magicians. Okay. They used to be magicians, and they turned themselves into vampires through taking some vampires and mixing some potions out of them and doing some mad medical experiments, you know? Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, they, uh, and then they, uh, they blood bond all their, uh, people to, like, their council kind of as a threat. But, like, when you first get, uh, when you first get, uh, your, uh, embrace, they make you drink blood from the council of seven once. So you're stuck, like, being, like, one step to being blood bonded to the inner council. That's amazing. And then they do it two more times. So and there's always like, oh, they sent him to Vienna, and that's always a bad so, thing. So the Tremere, you're, you're saying these Tremere, like, uh, they're these magicians that uh, use blood magic. And the blood magic uh, allowed them to become vampires by using this magic instead of being embraced by a vampire. Yeah, because they were mortal wizards, you know, mages. And they used magic, and they took some vampires and uh, experimented on them, and uh, basically uh, created themselves in the vampires using the vampiric blood. Bad so, motherfuckers. And uh, Damn. <laughs> yeah, they're kind of scary, and they're kind of militant. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> but they but they rip like paper because they're like magicians; they're not fighters. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But anyway. Then we have the Malkavian Revised Clan book. That's a good one. Nice. Uh, they're the, they're the, the vampires with the rangers. Oh, there's a note in that one. You met, missed it on the first page. There. Oh, there's a note. There's a note. Is that a receipt for an original? It's a receipt for 1585. Damn. That's got to make you feel good. In 1995. The year 2000. The year 2000. 20 years ago. 20 years ago. Some guy. His name's there. We don't need to say his name. Yeah, we don't have to say his name. I mean, like, nice like any other smiley name. face. Say you should face. leave it in there. <laughs> leave it on in there. Use it as a bookmark. Yeah, why not? I mean, it'd be a good thing to have in there. I mean, you know, like imagine you sold it, having that in there. Mm -hmm. That would help. This one's in nice condition too. That's in beautiful condition. This is a little harder one to get. Fourteen ninety five. Writers. I think that was a bookstore writers. I've heard of that before. Oh, okay. So what's up with a Malkavian? Like, what's why are they crazy or whatever? Well, it's part of their curse in the clan bloodline. Yeah. They uh, have a, a curse where all the Malkavians have, a, you know, insanity. Cool. They're like the the sages. The crazy prophets. Crazy prophets. And, and of course we got the Ventru. Oh, nice Ventru. Ventru are the uh, looks, blue bloods. It looks like a. Beautiful book, really, really well kept. Yeah, the Blue Bloods, the, the uh, Clan of Kings. They uh, rule kindred society mostly. At least they, they they hope to. They they run the Camarilla pretty much, the Ivory Tower. And uh, they don't like the uh, Giovanni too much. Why not? The Giovanni like to run stuff too, and they're Italian mobsters. Oh, dude. Awesome. Oh, then we got the Zamisi. Is that how oh, we say it? Oh, that's right. The Zamisi are the ones with the with the weird. Now, I like the word Shimache to say it. Okay, the Shimache are the ones that uh, are. They're the ones that manipulate their skin and create monsters. But I have heard the pronunciation of this, and it is Zamisi, because it was a video game, and they pronounced it that way in the video game. Well, maybe they were pronouncing it wrong. I don't know. But this has got some crazy ass artwork, and just so you guys know, this this video is not for children. So well, if you got children here, that's a you warning. Should, you should turn them away right now before I flip this book over. Yep. Because it's going to be disturbing. All right. So you've been warned. So here we're going to continue. And if this is all on you, if you like, let your kids see this. Yeah. 
Alright, look at that, Adam. What do you think of that? Wow, what's that? Uh, Let's some take... flesh craft, kind of... That reminds me of a Pink Floyd movie or something. Some girl I used to date in high school. Oh, so crazy <laughs> shit. Does you see, like, the flesh craft things? or the old fiends of, uh... Europe. Oh, that's what it's called, flesh craft. Mm -hmm. Flesh craft, monsters. they make monsters, and look at that crazy crap. Yeah, yeah lots of weird flesh crafty nice stuff. That looks almost gore like. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so. Pick these up, man. They're hard to find anymore. And, you know, they're worth the, they're worth the read. They're worth it for just for the artwork. Oh, it's a fun game. And then we got Clan Bruja. There's Theo Bell right on the front. You read a little bit briefly we, about Theo Bell. We talked about three, Theo Bell. Yeah, yeah, he was an Archon with his Dragon's Breath rounds mm -hmm. and his shotgun. Yeah, yeah. Burning up some people. Nice. And the Bruja are the hotheads. They're the uh, people that practice physical supremacy and mental supremacy. They're the rebels, the wabble wowses. Nice. <laughs> yeah, not as much artwork in this one. And there's the old classic Bruja clan book. I did have this one previously. So I'll probably either pass it along to Durley or maybe flip it at the Interstellar Trade Federation. Okay, you might see this uh, at the Interstellar Trade Federation coming up. <laughs> I think giving it to Durley is a good idea. Yeah. But there's always a flipping and getting your money back. That's yeah. always nice. Buy more books. Buy more books. There's the little Zombra First Edition clan book. They're the Shadow Icky Black Darkness people. Lots of darkness. Look how the pages are black. Yeah, that's unique. And uh, probably cost a fortune. That's really cool. <clears throat> yeah, that's a good clan book. People love the Lazombra because of Lucida. So I'm noticing that they have like these, um, mm -hmm. they have these um, player character sheets in the back of the books. So are they unique to the Lazombra? Pre-made characters. Pre-made characters. Oh, pre-made characters. So oh. you can like just jump in and play a game. Or if you're a P, uh, if you're a DM, you can have them as NPCs, just readily available to play. But the reason people like the Lazombras a lot is because of Lucida. She was a really popular character. One of their uh, trademark characters, just like Theo Bell. She was, you know, one of the main characters they used in their games. Not as much artwork in the revised ones. It seems like the first edition ones had a lot more artwork. So wait, what's unique about these guys now? Those Ombra? Yeah, those Ombra. Uh, they uh, like have this power called a tenebration, and it's like icky black darkness. Remember the uh, car, uh, the uh, Monsignor, who was able to like black out the windows at mm -hmm. the cathedral. Yes. And uh, he was able to control shadows and everything. Mm. That's what they do. They they don't have a reflection. Interesting. Icky black darkness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, here's one of my favorites. And the Gangrel first edition Gangrel clan book. What a great lot. I mean, just so much material here. All my players will be able to look at the, that's a cool picture. All my players will be able to refer to this when they like learn about their clans with these. When, when they expand out, after I kill them, and uh, they have to make new characters. Mm-hmm. Those are poor life, unlife choices. <laughs> mm -hmm. and there's the revised Gangrel Clan book also. Oh, revised, nice. So we have both of them. Yeah, I mean, these go for like 20 bucks at least, you know? I feel like I got a good deal getting these for like 100 bucks. There was a big Wraith lot as well, but that went for like 230 bucks, and I think uh, the other people spent all their money on the Wraith books. <laughs> oh, and there's my, my, this pulls in my heartstrings, the Nosferatu. Oh, sure. Those are my favorite clan. Fourteen ninety five when it came out. These are getting harder to get because people who are Nasas don't get rid of their clan books because that shit's from the heart. <laughs> that shit's from the heart. <laughs> Total eclipse of the Nas. This is the one that I really love. I, I used to have this on a shirt. I used to love that shirt. It's such a cool shirt. Yeah. Tim Brad street artwork. Nice. 
I always like Brad Street. He was really good. And here's that first edition Giovanni clan book, those guys I was telling you about. Cool. They also uh, are necromancers. So they're Italian mobsters who talk to dead people. And they're like one of the richest families in the world of darkness because they actually have a mortal family. And so they keep the mortal family, like, you know, well off. Like, the vampires control their finances for, like, generations and generations and just build, like, immense wealth, you know, over time. Uh, Their uh, flaw is their bite hurts. So when they bite you, you don't like it. Oh, I see. (laughs) (laughs) That's their flaw. Yeah, that's that's their clan flaw. But their whole thing's about being Italian mobsters, huh? Well, that's what they are. It's not what their thing is, it's what they are. Yeah, lots of cool art, though. <laughs> that's pretty crazy, huh? Yeah. Yeah, and some of the stuff they came up with, pretty awesome. It'd be cool to get more original World of the Darkness artwork. I really like the stuff I got. Yeah. There's the second edition Giovanni oh, book. Oh, cool, groovy. Nice, man. They all look like they're in great shape. Yeah, they're not bad. The, I think you did the really worst well. ones were the uh, Giovanni Chronicles books. And you know what? Mine were beat to hell that I used to have because I remember I ran those a few times. And we got the... Well, we'll do the first edition Ravnos first. Since there's only two left to look at. Ravnos. They're the gypsies. They're flies. They're criminals. Are they like Romania? Yeah. Lots of times. They don't necessarily have to be, but they usually are. Cool. Romany. Yeah. Very cool. Neat. Such an expanded universe. And then, the and then you've described to me that, I mean, if you read the Book of Cain, you can see that it actually starts in the Garden of Eden. Uh, but it's gone all the goes all the, the way Nod. through Dark Ages, and then it comes mm-hmm. all the way into modern... Day. Yeah, it started out as pretty much modern day, but as the game went along, they kind of f- filled out all their stuff, you know? Yeah, that's cool. And, uh, you know, yeah. we've really been enjoying playing again. It's been a lot of fun, man. So I've been buying the books again after the flood. Funny, after the flood, huh? Uh-huh. My anti-Diluvian collection yeah. now. Uh-huh. Your pre Yeah, that yeah, would be... my pre-Diluvian collection. And I have a few I have a few pre-Diluvian books. Yeah. Some survived. Well, that would be anti-Diluvian. Yeah, well, anti means after the flood. Oh, so the antediluvian vampires are from after the they, flood? No, they survived the flood. So they're from before the flood? They're from before the flood. That was actually, like, uh, God's vengeance, you know, for, like, the first city, like, all the vampires living there, and, you know, dogs and cats living together, you know, yeah. craziness. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, Bill Murray. So. Do the Ghostbusters movie. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he is. Right. Hopefully. They're just going to come out with a big bag of money. It'd be crazy if it was Bill Murray and Rick Moranis. That'd be awesome. Yeah. And all the other guys. That's if movie theaters are Except for again. Egon. I guess they're going to have to have uh, some type of funeral or something. I, I really think movie theaters are going to eventually be a thing of the past, though. Except for in people's basements. Yeah. But, very nice. I'm very happy with this purchase. I got a nice short box to put them in. To thin out my other books that I just got. A little chunk of books, man. Look at that. Yeah, buddy. Dang. Beautiful. Well, thanks for watching, guys. And uh, yeah, was, th- thanks for showing us your books, man. Those oh. are really sweet. Oh, it's always Looking fun, man. forward to the continuation of the storytelling. Oh yeah, man. We're gonna have some more fun. Uh, we're going to Cairo, and uh, I'm gonna start reviewing some World of Darkness books, and I'm gonna start off with Cairo by night. So. Look for the next episode to uh, be a review of Cairo by Night. And uh, have a great evening, folks, and Star Wipe.